the funeral of his petitude, Patriarch Ignatius IV Hazim is held at Mary's Church in Damascus. The Russian Foreign Ministry rejects imposing foreign dictates on Syria. And Syrian Arab Armed Forces eliminate terrorists in various areas and destroy their weapons. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. A Solomon funeral was held for Roman Orthodox Patriarch Ignatius IV Hazim of Antioch and the Holy East at Mary's Church Cathedral in Damascus. Religious prayers were held for the rest of his soul with the participation of the choir of St. John Institute in Damascus. The Mass was attended by a number of church representatives, Islamic clerks, and in addition to mourning citizens. Prime Minister Wael Halaki laid the cornerstone of the fifth stage of the project of youth housing in the mass area. The cost of the project is estimated at 20 billion Syrian pounds. On the other hand, Al Halaki toured the project of youth housing in the suburbs of Qutsaya and reviewed the work mechanisms of the general establishment of housing. Russia reaffirmed today that the foreign intervention in Syria's affairs remained unacceptable and that the situation and the solution should be based on national dialogue. A statement by the Russian Foreign Ministry asserted that the Geneva tripartite meeting and the Americans and the UN envoy to Syria stressed that the political solution should be found by the Syrians themselves because their country is sovereign and independent and thus needed no foreign dictates and ready prescriptions. The statement asserted that Russia, on the basis of these principles, would strongly support al Ibrahim's efforts in Syria. From Geneva, the UN envoy to Syria, al-Ahdar al-Ibrahimi, returned to Syria after talks with American and Russian officials. He asserted that they agreed that it is still possible to find a political solution to the crisis. In a statement issued after his talks, al Ibrahimi said, that the meeting was constructive and held in a spirit of cooperation. The meeting discussed continuing efforts in a peaceful process and to mobilize a larger international meeting to find a political solution. Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Saleh renewed Iran's attitude regarding the political solution to the crisis in Syria through national dialogue among the Syrians themselves. He criticized the double standards in dealing with issues in this region, particularly in Syria. Saleh affirmed Iran's support of the options of Syrian people and its firm stand against the crimes of the terrorist groups who receive foreign support in order to continue the bloodshed in Syria. In our local news, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army eliminated a number of the most dangerous terrorists who are affiliated to a Nusra Front in the town of al Diabiyah in Damascus countryside. An official source said that 45 terrorists were killed in front of Al-Khomeini Hospital. Some of the terrorists were known, including terrorist Abai Jawish, nicknamed Al-Arandas, Muhammad Safi, Abu Qasim Al-Dirani, Hamad Al-Masri, Hassan Sharidah, along with others. 150 terrorists who took Al Haridi Hospital in the town of Yelda as a hideout were also injured. Security forces killed 10 terrorists in the quarter of Sheikh Muhaddin in Damascus. In these terrorists carried out crimes of looting and attacked citizens. Security forces confiscated their weapons, which included RPGs, machine guns, and other heavy automatic rifles. On the other hand, the competent authorities settled the cases of 41 people in Damascus and its countryside after they surrendered and handed over their weapons, pledging not to commit acts that threaten Syria's security in the future. In Aleppo, five terrorists were killed when a handmade rocket exploded while they were trying to fire it 
near Al Aruba Club in Bustan al Basha. A unit of the Syrian Arab Army also carried out a number of operations in Aleppo and its countryside, targeting the hideouts of terrorists and their stores of weapons, inflicting heavy casualties among them. In Deir Zor, units of our Syrian Arab Army clashed with terrorists affiliated to Al Nusra Front in the neighborhoods of Al Jbele, Al Hamidiyya, Al Mudzafin, and Al Hawiqa, killing and injuring many of them. Among the terrorists killed, uh, there were two Saudis. A bomb blast blew up in a building where a number of terrorists were sheltered in a Jbele neighborhood, inflicting heavy dam damages in their cars and motorbikes. And in Hama, a military engineering unit diffused 10 explosive devices that were planted by the terrorists the, to target citizens and passers-by on the road of Asqalbiyeh, Kafarnabuda, in the governorate's countryside. An official source said that the explosives weighed between 25 and 40 kilograms and that they were all prepared to be detonated remotely. In Latakia, a unit from the Syrian Arab army destroyed a terrorist hideout in the town of Salma. An official source said that the operation also resulted in the killing of many terrorists who were committing acts of looting and vandalism in the area. The Syrian Commission of Family Affairs, in collaboration with the respective government and civil bodies, held a training workshop of a program prepared with a national team for psychological and social support for deprived families. The workshop aims at rehabilitating them to work in all shelters with the disadvantaged people throughout the country. The workshop will last for four days. The city of Adana in Turkey witnessed a large demonstration in protest against the aggressive policy of Erdogan's government against Syria. The demonstration was entitled Syrian Turkish Brotherhood Against American Treachery. In the same context, women of the Turkish Labour Party called for a women's march in Antioch on December 22nd for the same purpose under the motto Syria and Turkey hand in hand through new construction. The march will express the Turkish people's rejection of Erdogan's aggressive policies, the war on Syria and the necessity to close terrorist training camps in Antioch. And from Turkey we end our news bulletin for today. You can find out more details on our website in English www.serialonline.sy. Stay with us after the break. Nariman has the latest in economy and finance.